Okay, today we're going to understand the cross product. Again, our goal is to have a real intuition. The cross product really just refers to the symbol. It's a cross symbol used, and that doesn't really capture the intuition. So a better rephrasing is something like the difference product or the um, kind of what's not in common product. And the way I think about it is if you have two vectors, um, A and B, and they have components, right? There's an X, Y, and Z component on each. Let's just try to mix every possible component. The components that are in common are the dot product. Those are the similar parts, right? X with X, Y with Y, Z with Z. The components that are different are the cross product. So basically we have all the similar parts and all the different parts that are contained in this grid. And they're actually connected to the entire vector, um, essentially by the Pythagorean theorem, but you can think of it intuitively as the similar parts plus the different parts equals all the parts, right? Because a part is either one or the other. So again, the cross product is saying what things are not in common, and we just want to add all of that up. Now, intuitively, you might say, well, why do I care about that, right? Why do we want to know what's not in common? Well, you're trying to find the difference, and it turns out a lot of things in the real world are actually based on differences, not in similarities. So for example, area, right? If I have two parallel lines that are kind of on the same, the same plane here, there's no area between them, right? Because they're kind of on top of each other. But if they point in different directions, now I have that box that's being made, or the, the, um, the square, or from three dimensions, I have three vectors, there's a cube being made. So area and volume are actually made by things going in different directions, right? So if we want to know the area of something, we say, well, how different are the vectors? How different are the sides? Because the area starts shrinking as they get more and more in common. So that's one use case. One use case. Another time, I mean, physics, a lot of the times, um, there's torque, and torque is... Uh, basically looking at things that are happening in different directions, not in the same direction. So there's kind of some reasons that you want to measure things that are different, and sometimes you want to measure things that are the same. Um, so uh, this is an example here. We can again see the area is basically being formed by things that are in different directions, not in the same direction. So um, let's think about how to work this out a little bit. Um, now we might say that you know the, the dot product is actually just a number. It's not a direction, it's just a number. So maybe the cross product should be a number two. In the case of a dot product, essentially cosine um, of the angle between them times the scale, times the lengths. But you can think of it as um, for normalized vectors, like a number between zero and one, um, or it's a kind of a percentage similarity. It can be negative two, but you can think of it as kind of a percentage similarity. So it's like one half or one point something. So should differences be similar? Should you kind of take the lengths of the vectors and find the sign between them and have some kind of number? Well, the problem is vectors can be different in a few different ways, right? Um, if I have x and y like this, this direction is different from both of them, but this direction is also different, right? So it's interesting. We, we might not want a single number. We kind of want to have an orientation. We sort of want to decide that, hey, if we have a and b like this, we're considering this element or that element. So they're a little bit different, and we need, sort of need a convention. So uh, what happens with the, um, with the cross product is that we basically have a convention that um, this is called the right hand rule. You basically have A on your first finger, B on your second finger, and the cross product is your thumb. So you basically, I think of it as kind of sweeping my finger. And again, the only reason we're doing this is because we need to decide which direction is up. So we say A cross B is a new direction, and it's positive in this direction. So a cross B, the positive result of that cross product is this way. If the cross product is negative, it would be down. So that's kind of the uh, intuition. In a lot of tests, you'll see people kind of moving their fingers. But right-hand rule, A cross B is positive this way. So in this case, uh, we can kind of do a quick little test. 1, 0, 0, which is 1 in the x direction, cross 0, 1, 0, which is 1 in the y direction, would be positive Z. So it would be x cross y is positive z. So the x-axis, <laughs> the y-axis, and the z-axis would be up. So, um, and that's kind of the right-handed system. So um, the main consideration here is really, OK, we have all these different components, right? If we look at this, we have a ton of different interactions. We just sort of want a rule that helps us figure out how to add them all up. So, we're actually going to have six additions, right? We have six items that are not in common. 
and our convention is going to be positive x to positive y is positive z. So x cross y is z. And if we go the other way, y cross x would be negative z. So you can think of this um, intuitively by kind of writing it down. So I write down x, y, z, x, y, z, and I kind of look for the pattern. So x cross y is z, and if I want to go the other way, it's y cross x is negative z, because I was going backwards in my reading. And also the same thing, y cross z is x, because I'm going, kind of going forward in my reading, but x cross z is y, or negative y, because we're going backwards. In so that is, again, just helping us get the convention of which direction is positive, which direction is negative. So once we have that, <laughs> finally we can calculate the cost product, which again is six interactions, right? We have all of those different interactions in that grid, and we just need to multiply them, but have a sign which indicates which direction we're going. So again, we can think of A as being made of three parts, X, Y, and Z. B is made of three parts, X, Y, and Z. And basically, we're crossing these, this kind of set of parts. It's kind of a multiplication between two items, each of which has three parts. Whew. So the result looks something like this. And again, we can kind of work it out. So this component, let, let's actually go to this component here. So the last component is made up of the x and y things, right? Because x cross y is z. That means x and y are contributing to the z component. So in this case, ax times by, that should be positive because it's in the right direction. x, y, so that should be positive. ax, by. If we go the other way, bx times ay, oh, okay, well that's going to be negative because we're going backwards, right? We went from b to a, x to y, so it should be negative. So we have ax by minus ay bx. So again, it looks a little bit tricky because there's so many parts, but each one is just using the rules that we have. So there's six terms, half are positive, half are negative. And basically each dimension is determined by the two other ones. So I know it seems kind of tricky, but if you look at it, it's just a bunch of interactions and it's complicated because there's way more ways for things to be different than for them to be similar. And there's an algebraic proof essentially that this vector points out of the plane. So if we have two vectors, the result of doing all this algebra, it's going to be a vector that points out of the plane. But my intuition here, okay, you want to think about intuitively, is that, well, if we say that X and Y create Z, that those two components interacting are making something perpendicular to them, right? Because X cross Y is Z, yeah, cool, we've got something perpendicular, that's our rule. And essentially, Every set of components is voting on the way to be perpendicular. And so the result is kind of all the votes added up, and that result is perpendicular to everybody because everybody voted on how to make it perpendicular. So again, you know, we have these two vectors. Each little mini component here is working with the other ones to vote on how to be perpendicular, and all the votes together get us a perpendicular vector. Okay, so now let's actually try an example. Um, it's important to have an intuitive understanding and not just mechanically go through the formula. So when you see something like this, you just want to think, okay, well, we have x, something in the x dimension, cross something in the y dimension. It should be something in the z dimension. It's kind of like 1 and 1 is 2. This should be the kind of the simple statement that x cross y is z. So in this case, there's no scaling or everything is 1. So it's 1, 0, 0, cross 0, 1, 0. So the x vector cross the y vector is the z vector. And so that should just be kind of a quick little intuition that we have. Um, if we do something a little bit more complicated, like 1, 2, 3, cross 4, 5, 6, it gets tricky and, and you have to kind of write it down sometimes just to keep track of it. But really, intuitively, you want to think, okay, the last component, I like to start with the z component sometimes just because we can deal with x and y first. The z component will be decided entirely by the x and y components of the vector, right? So the z component of the cross product will be determined by the x and y components of the input vectors. And again, the x and, the x and y components are being mixed, and their signs are being determined by that little rule, x, y, z, x, y, z. Okay, so with all that said, let's try it out. To get the z component, we need to look at only the x and y components here. And we have the rule that x cross y is z. So x cross y is z will be positive. So we have 1 times 5, that will be a positive vote. And the negative vote will be the opposite direction, 4 times 2. Because here, 1 times 5, we're going from the x component to the y component. That's the order we want. 
The other way is y to x, and that's actually backwards. So it'll be positive 5, that's one vote, and then negative 8, negative 2 times 4, or 2 times 4, the negation of that is negative 8. So the total vote is negative 3 in the z direction. Okay, and then we can basically do that for every term. So now let's focus about the y dimension. The y dimension will be determined entirely by the x and z components of the other items, right? Because x and z vote for y. But what's the order? Well, I think, okay, x, y, z, x, y, z, um, x, y, z, x. So z, x is going to be positive y. So actually what we're going to have here then is if we want to get the positive y direction, it'll be z times x. So 3 and 4 is 12, that's a positive vote. And the other direction, x to z will be negative. So we have 3 times 4 is positive, and then 1 times 6 will be negative. So our net vote will actually be 6, right? We have 3 times 4 is 12, minus 6. And that's 6 here. And the last component, um, well, we can figure it out. Again, x is determined by the y and z. Yep, you got it. So we need, only need to look at these last two things, right? y and z will help us figure, figure out x. And what's the order? x, y, z, x. So y and z give us positive x. So y times z is positive. So 2 times 6 will be positive, 12. And the other order, 3 times 5, right? The other ones is going to be negative. So that's going to be a negative 15. So the net result is positive 12 minus 15, negative 3. So we do all that arithmetic and we get negative 3, 6, negative 3, which is the cross product here that we can find a Wolfram alpha. So it is a lot of little algebra, but now you understand why. Um, sometimes in class you'll see some, some sort of mnemonics like this to help figure it out. And all this is doing is just helping you understand the order to do things. But intuitively just think about it as a bunch of votes and you just want to know which direction, positive or negative, the votes should be going in. Um, in the article, there's some more you know, discussions about the connection with curl. But again, the cross product, ultimately, just think of this diagram. And you can actually put in all the multiplications and then work out what sign things should be. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Use that to find the right order. With that, happy math.